Okay, in this video, what we're going to learn about a little bit is exponential functions. Wow, these are fun. Um, okay, they're actually, they're, they're pretty cool. Exponential functions. Okay, and most of this work you'll do on the calculator. Um, you know, you, you might hear the expression like something increases exponentially. Well, this is what it means. Okay, so let's say you had a typical exponential function is where it has an exponent for the variable. So, for instance, you might have f of x equals 2 to the x. Well, if you made, uh, I'm not going to go through and make a table for you. You can do that on your calculator. Just enter this into the y equals. Um, but the y-intercept here is going to be 1 because when x is 0, y is 1. And then the thing about this is it has what's called an asymptote. Um, an asymptote is, um, you know, a value of x, um, like as x gets, in this case, as x gets smaller, it's going to get closer and closer to zero, but it's not actually going to get to zero. So, this, uh, let's see, let's get a different color here. This color, this graph is going to look like this. Looks like kind of a half pike skateboard ramp. Woohoo! So you can imagine um, going like this. Now, the asymptote here is the x-axis. Okay. Now, if we were to, you know, make this minus two like that, the the asymptote would be would be down here, and it's and it's normally denoted by, um, you know, a dotted line like that. So um, that's what it would look like if it were, um, you know, f of x to the two x. Now, if you did like something like this, f of x uh, equals two to the negative x. Well, that you know, that's just gonna Whoa, that is an awesome line. Okay, so that is going to just go like this if we have f of x here. Um, again, it's going to cross at 1, and this one would be exactly the opposite. As it would, as the number gets bigger, it's going to be a negative exponent. So if like this was negative you know, 5 or something like this, it would be 1 32nd. So it's going to be going down like this towards 0. And that again zeros your your horizontal asymptote here, and then as it you know goes into negative numbers here, negative negative becomes positive. So you know like two to the fifth is 32, two to the sixth is 64, you know two to the seventh 128, blah blah blah. It gets pretty big. Now you can also flip them over, which is kind of cool. So like let's say you had you know f of x equals negative two to the x power. Um, that would look you know something like this. Um, you know, we had this one go like this. Well, in, in this case, it would just, you know, flip the, it would be negative one would be the y-intercept would just be like, whoop, it'd just go like that. It just, it, uh, you know, reflects over the x-axis, which is kind of neat. Um, and then, you know, if you had, you can imagine what's going to happen if I do, you know, negative two to the negative x. Well, you know, if we had something, again, you know, we have our, uh, axis here. Okay, well, this one was like this, so we just flip it over, and it would be like, whoop, like that. Okay, so that's basically how they do. Now, where does this come in real life? Like, they often talk about, um, you know, bacteria cultures and things like that that, that grow exponentially. And you, normally, they're doubling or tripling every whatever minute or hour or whatever. Um, so that's where some of these problems are come in, going to come in, and we will do one right now. Okay, so let's look at this problem. Um, this is a paper one problem, six points. I think it's two points apiece um, for A, B, and C here. It says, in an experiment, researchers found that a specific culture of bacteria increases in number according to the formula. Okay, the number equals 150 times 2 to the T power, where N is the number of bacteria present and T is the number of hours since the experiment began. Use this formula to calculate the number of bacteria present at the start of the experiment. Well, at the start of the experiment, that's when, you know, t is going to equal zero. So, you know, it's going to be 150 times, you know, 2 to the zero power. Now, a lot of kids make a mistake. 2 to the zero power is 1. So, you know, 150 times 1 is just 150. So there's 150 bacteria uh, at the beginning of the experiment. Okay. Now, we can enter this into our calculator. How many are, are present after three hours? Okay, well, that's that's pretty easy. We just do the number is 150 times uh, 2 to the third power. Okay, 2 to the third power is 8, so 8 times 150 would be, um, what is that? 8 times what? 800, 400, 1,200 bacteria. 
Now you can just enter that in the calculator as well. Um, you know, I would do if you're going to break this out. I would you know just go like uh, let's see 150. times 2 to and then raise it to the third power and you get 1200. Okay, cool. We're good. Now, the numbers of hours it would take for the bacteria to reach 19,200. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky. Now, you don't have to know how to use logarithms in math studies, but uh, let me just uh, let me show you two ways to do this. So, you have 19,200 equals um, you know, 150 times 2 to the t power. Now, um, I guess you could guess and check if you wanted to, but an easy way to do this is let's just go back to the calculator here, and we'll just put, you know, 150 times 2 raised to, well, it's not going to be t, it's going to be x here. And, you know, let's just graph, uh, we don't need to graph it, it's, it's exponential, um, but let's see, um, let's see what the table looks like. So the table's at 0, 150, 600, 3 hours, 1,200. Ooh, so our, our answer was right on the first one, on part B, and on uh, part A. Good. So it's a way to check it. So let's just go down until we get 19,200. Oh, well, it's 7. So X, you know, X is, or not T, X. T is going to e whoops, T is going to equal 7 hours here. Now, um, another way to do this, with, let me just show you real quick. 19,200 equals 150 times 2 to the t power. Um, you just do 1920 or 1,000. Uh, excuse me, 19,200 divided by 150 equals 2 to the t power. Um, and then, so let's you know figure out what that is. So 19,200 divided by 150 equals 128. So it's going to be, um, you know, 128 equals 2 to the t power. Now the way you do that on your calculator, if you want to use logs, is you just do log uh, 128 divided by log um, 2 equals t. Now you don't have to know how to do that. It's not in the curriculum, um, but sometimes it helps out. And especially it will give you an exact answer if it's not a whole number. So let me show you that log is right here. So just do log 128 um, divided by log 2, and you get 7. Beautiful. Okay, so that's the second way to do it. Um, T would equal 7 right here. Okay, beautiful prime number, 7. What George Costanza wanted to name his daughter, 7 Costanza. Why? Because he loved Mickey Mantle. All right, anyway, there's your pop culture reference for the day. Okay, so um, let's move on. Let's do one more. Hold on just a second. I'll put it up. Okay, so let's look at this one. Uh, it says the number N of bacteria in a colony after H hours is given by the formula. N equals 1,200 times 3 raised to the 0.25H, which H is hours. Initially, there are 1,200 bacteria in the colony. Copy and complete the table below which gives values of N and H, or H, if you're H, 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 anyway, whatever. Okay, so what you need to do here, the best way to do this is you're just going to have to sub in 1 and 4. Now, what I would do, quite frankly, is I just entered into the calculator right here, um, which I've already done to save a little time, and then I'm just going to go into, you know, second, Table. Now, the thing here is it says give your answers to the nearest hundred. So at one, it's 1579. Okay, so well, that's going to be 1600. Okay, and then let's look at four. What's four? 30, well, it's 3600. That's nice. Okay, so 3600. Boom. Okay, so part B says on graph paper, draw the graph of the function above. Um, use a scale of three centimeters to represent one hour on the horizontal axis. Okay, so that's three boxes, um, five by five boxes or one centimeter, and four centimeters to represent a thousand on the vertical axis. Label the graph clearly. Okay, well I'm going to go. I'm going to do this real quick. Uh, you don't have to watch me make a graph, so I'll be back in one second. Okay, so what I did here is I, I drew the graph. Okay, just like they asked me to do. 
Okay, so it takes a little bit of time. You always want to make sure you have like a, a pencil for this. Um, use a scale of three centimeters to represent one hour on the horizontal axis. So, you know, on the horizontal axis down here, um, you can see it's going one hour, two hours. It's going by, you know, in threes here. So it's going by 20 minutes, okay, so down here. And then up here, it's um, four centimeters to rep represent a thousand. So what's going on here is it's going by 250. So these, these little boxes are actually 50. Um, so it's pretty important that you graph it correctly. Um, you know, uh, I don't really know what to tell you other than that. I mean, just um, if you if you don't can't really figure that out, just just use your calculator and and you should be able to get the the WIS because um, it's going to make a difference. Okay, so let's look. Um, but anyway, as you can see here, it's exponential. It goes like this, and these were all my values that I plotted. So like zero, twelve hundred, one, sixteen hundred, two, twenty one hundred. Uh, 3, 2700. Now, I actually ran out of room here because I, I couldn't fit the graph on, but it's all right because we're not, for the next problem, we're actually not going to need this. So let's see what they ask us um, on these bad boys. Okay, so use your graph to answer each of the following questions. Show your method clearly. How many bacteria would there be after two hours and 40 minutes? Give your answer to the nearest uh, 100. Okay, so two hours and 40 minutes. So if we're going to do that, um, you know, here's 2, here's 220, here's 240. So, you know, you should always have a ruler, and I don't have a ruler because um, it's really hard to use a ruler on a stencil like this. But that's all right because I'm getting better. Getting better. Okay, so go up here, boom, and, you know, this when they say show your method clearly, um, and they say use your graph, so this is what they want you to do. I mean, you could actually figure it out mathematically just to check your work, but that that looks like it's right in between. Um, let's see if we were to look here. Um, it's in between, you know, uh, 2,000, 3,000. It's 2,500. So that answer right there is going to be 2,500 um, bacteria. Mm, great, 2,500 bacteria. Awesome. After how long uh, will there be 3,000 bacteria? Give your answer in the nearest 10 minutes. Okay, no problem. Well, 3,000, again, we'll just go, you know, let's use a different color here. Um, 3,000, so this time they want you to start from here. Um, you know, this is these are like when you use like a cumulative frequency graph often. Um, you have to do stuff like this. You know, you have to show it out, what the percentiles and all that stuff. Okay, so... Now, okay, so it's three hours here, and then it's one over, so that's, you know, three hours and 20 minutes. Okay, so we can do three hours and 20 minutes, and we are good to go. Okay, and so that was your H for that one, or H, however you say it. Okay, well, anyway, um, there you go. There's exponential functions. Um, hopefully that will help out a little bit. Um, if you got any questions, leave a comment. Um, if you want me to make something, leave a comment or whatever. Um, and that's cool, man. And I will leave you with one last thing that I have to show you because it's funny. Hold on. Okay, so before I leave you, I just want to, I want you, I want you to think here real quickly. Okay, and I just want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine. Check this out. Boom! Oh, oh, that's not right. Oh, man. Sorry about that. All right. Have a wonderful day.